Hello everyone. My name is Enlieb Kiran. In this video, I will present the paper Bioelectrofenton process driven by microbial fuel cell for wastewater treatment written by Chen Huafeng et al. This is the content of the presentation. I will start off with an introduction followed by an experimental section, results, and discussion. In the introduction, first let's talk about what a Fenton process is and what are its enhanced forms. A Fenton process is studied widely to degrade organic and biorefractory pollutants present in wastewater by highly oxidative hydroxyl radicals formed from the reaction of hydrogen peroxide and ferrous ions. A classical Fenton reaction occurs at a low pH of between 2 and 4 which needs initial acidification of polluted water and final neutralization of treated water. An enhanced form of the Fenton process is the E-Fenton process. In this process, the hydroxyl radicals are produced from the reaction of electro-generated hydrogen peroxide and ferrous ions. In the bio-E-Fenton process, Bioelectrons produced by microbes during the catalyzation of a substrate are used to power the Fenton process. The later form of the Fenton process is discussed in this paper. So why is the E-Fenton process better than the classical Fenton process? Because in situ generation of Fenton reagents which are hydrogen peroxide and ferrous ions, brings high efficiency of utilization and saves purchasing cost of hydrogen peroxide, and also the storage and transportation cost. It avoids initial acid treatment and final neutralization of treated water by using some low-soluble iron oxides. Not only it allows the system to proceed under a neutral pH, but it also self-regulates the ferrous ion supply and recycles the iron catalyst. Bioelectron Fenton process allows a constant electron supply to run the process using bioelectrons and reduces the only cost of the process, the power supply cost. So, this study proposes a microbial fuel cell-driven electron Fenton process taking advantage of both neutral electron Fenton reaction and utilization of bioelectrons as a power supply. The main components used are a carbon nanotube and lepidocrosite composite electrode and orange 2 dye. Lepidocrosite is a ferrous ion source, and it has higher solubility in water than gethite and hematite. Ferrous ions are produced at neutral pH using lepidocrosite. Carbon nanotubes have a larger surface area, good conductivity, and superior electrochemical activity than other carbon nanotubes. Orange 2 dye is used as a refractory to check the feasibility of the process. It is abundant in the wastewater of most industries. Schematic diagram shows anode and cathode chambers. The anode is a piece of carbon felt washed in hydrogen peroxide for three hours to improve its biocompatibility. In the anode chamber, Schuonella decoloration is produce electrons utilizing lactate. Electrons flow through a titanium wire to a cathode chamber where hydrogen peroxide and ferrous ions are generated. Hydroxyl radicals produced by the reaction of both reagents degenerate orange 2 dye. For the experiment, four types of microbial fuel cells were fabricated as A, B, C, and D. Anode was the same in all four cells. In cell A, the air was continuously flown into the cathode chamber. In cell B, nitrogen was purged into the cathode chamber and hydrogen peroxide and ferrous ions were absent. In cell C, no ferrous ions were produced and the cathode was only made of carbon nanotubes. Cell D, has the same configuration as cell A, under an open circuit condition, for the second part of the experiment, four cells with different cathode compositions were fabricated to check the concentration of Fenton reagents and power density. Results and discussion, degradation of orange 2 dye, the figure shows that the microbial fuel cell A, completely degraded orange 2 at pH 7 within 14 hours. Cell B, only degraded 10% of the dye because there was no hydrogen peroxide produced. Cell C degraded 8% of the refractory because of no ferrous ion. Cell D degraded only 3% because of insignificant adsorption of orange 2 onto the cathode. The experiment was run for 43 hours and orange 2 degradations were calculated by total organic carbon. 
From the figure, it can be seen that a 100% mineralization was seen in cell A and no total organic carbon reduction was seen for the other three cells, instead, there was a little increase in its value. It might be due to the release of some organic matter from carbon nanotubes on the cathode and the transport of organic matter from the anode chamber to the cathode chamber. For figure 2a, the apparent rate constant and apparent mineralization constant was calculated to be 0.121 per hour and 0.0827 per hour respectively, using the equation mentioned. Further process efficiency was evaluated using the apparent mineralization current efficiency and it was found to be 89% which is quite higher than other studies, owing to better utilization of electrical energy and suppression of parasitic reaction of hydroxyl radicals and ferrous ions. Table 1 shows how the cathode composition affects hydrogen peroxide and ferrous ion composition, kinetic parameters of orange 2 dye, and mineralization current efficiency. Figure 3 shows that when the experiment was performed for 10 runs there was a dramatic decrease in the constant values at the 5th and 10th runs due to the decline of pH and substrate. After replenishing the substrate the values were stable. Figure 4a shows hydrogen peroxide concentration with different cathode compositions. It was generated in three stages, static stage, progressive stage, and equilibrium stage. The concentration of hydrogen peroxide at carbon nanotubes and lepidocrosite weight ratio of 1 ratio 1 was maximum, hence, the fastest orange 2 degradations were achieved. Figure 4b shows ferrous ion concentrations with varying cathode compositions. It shows that ferrous ion concentration is not as sensitive to cathode composition as hydrogen peroxide. Because hydrogen peroxide plays a more important role in the generation of hydroxyl radicals. At the composition of 1 ratio 1, orange 2 degradation was maximum. Effect of cathode composition on the process performance, more lepidocrosite leads to more power generation and the composition of 1 ratio 2 generated maximum power density. A comparison of orange 2 degradations and power density shows that trends are different in both processes. Because more lepidocrosite catalyzes more oxygen to generate power, but also leads to the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water, decreasing the orange 2 degradation rate, which depends on the hydrogen peroxide concentration. Figure 5b shows that the anode and cathode potentials are different for different compositions. The different cathode compositions are responsible for different power outputs. The diagram shows the electron transfer mechanism in the bio-electron process and electrochemical activity in the chambers. Protons and electrons produced in the anode chamber move to the cathode chamber to reduce oxygen to hydrogen peroxide. Ferrous ions are also produced in the cathode. Hydrogen peroxide and ferrous ions react to produce hydroxyl radicals that consequently degrade orange 2. Environmental perspective, the process is eco-friendly because of no requirement for an external power supply, rather electrons are generated through the catalyzation of Schuonella decoloration ease in an anode chamber. Wastewater is treated at neutral pH using carbon nanotubes and lepidocrosite composite cathode, hence, avoiding acid treatment and neutralization. Better utilization of hydrogen peroxide than the external supply can be achieved. However, the process must be improved before its commercial application. The system should improve hydrogen peroxide production which may be achieved by imposing a small potential on the cathode. The continuous flow of species between anode and cathode and optimization of parameters, such as retention time, removal efficiency, and work loading are important. Here are some questions for you, 1, why did increasing the concentration of lepidocrosite, the iron source, in cathode increase power output but lower orange 2 degradation after a maximum value was reached, 2, what does contribute to the dramatic decrease in orange 2 degradation at the 5th and 10th run, 3, what does TOC, total organic carbon, indicate? Thank you.